<laughs> and welcome to the podcast, Appetite for Distortion, episode 204. I have another audience today uh, during my Feel Fear My Quarantine sub-series. Uh, I will say, even though we couldn't hear it, I'm editing it, I'm adding it in later in post. Our theme music, uh, I, I say, and I, I think it should need to be more, we need to be reminded more about who it's by. And I know J Jeff Rouse is pointing down, which it actually makes sense for Zoom. You might not always be pointing the right way. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Mike Squires from Loaded. Hi, Jeff. Hi, guys. <laughs> and Jeff Rouse also <laughs> from Dr. Gagan's Loaded. But uh, before we just, you know, say hi and, and just pleasantries and everything going on with both of you, uh, before I, I lose it, Mike, have you been on since we played, since you gave me your, the theme song for the show? I have uh, not been on your podcast since then, no. I think it was like episode, if I remember, you gave it to me like episode 50 or something. And the first episode I used it on was Jeff back in episode 55, which mm -hmm. now we're up to 204. So That's amazing. Uh, it is crazy. It's been a while. How are you putting one out? More than one a week, then? Sometimes that happens. My goal is once a week, but there are weeks where it's just the guests just come out and I don't like sitting on them and I want to get them out, make it feel like as much of live radio as you can or being a podcast. So I don't like, you know, I can do three, po I can do three podcasts a week and then have the next month sent or do I want to keep it fresh and just, so. It's hard to maintain productivity. It is. There are weeks where, honestly, the, the keep it, real as the kids say there are plenty of weeks where i'm like i'm never going to get another guest i'm never going to do another episode no one's mm -hmm. ever going to listen to my show again and then all of a sudden jeff rouse inboxes me and saying i have a new project i want to talk about and i'm like you know what i want to get mike squires we've been talking about doing a our family guy since <laughs> our crossover so mm -hmm. let's let's do it so then an episode just comes out of nowhere so then here we are and then tomorrow as i release it or maybe tonight It'll be about a week since my last episode. It's weird how that happens. It really yeah. is. But let's go back to you not knowing that Mike wrote that song for you, for this. I thought it was a piece of music from Mike Squires. I didn't know that it was a Mike Squires specific appetite for distortion little ditty. And yeah. Then, yeah, no, that wasn't something that I just had and I was sitting on. It I remember was, when you were doing it, like and telling yeah, me about it. It's cool. I mean, you know, it's not like... I was trying to sound like I was trying to not sound like the source band. It's like, <laughs> it, was just, it was as close a nod I could, I could do without, you know, you hear those commercials on the radio, you know, on the TV or whatever for a while. Like there are all these sort of like hot band, hot, hot songs that things sound like for a long time, everything sounded like, um, the black keys sure right it had like a and then everything sounded like a dodge truck commercial where there was like blues guitar and it was like <laughs> you know exactly what i'm talking about yeah, i do i do it becomes a familiar sound that people can identify with and they don't want to pay the royalty rights to the band that actually you know plays the music but you know what I, I really think just uh, my I have very few brain cells left due to a variety of reasons. I mean, it's coming back to me now that Mike, you did uh, was that a giant bucket you just hocked into? What, it was what? a pillow? Uh, I'm oh, it was a pillow. I was like, "Are you all right, Mike?" I was like, "I don't need to have you if you have an eating disorder. You look great." I know what you're uh, doing. right into a bucket. Okay. <laughs> Now I remember, because I don't know if you still do this, you offered to write people their own theme song for like <laughs> a, a minimal fee. And we worked at a trade. I'm like, I'll, I'll just mention my squires. And this, so are you still doing that? <laughs> well, no one ever took me up on that. I wrote my own. You know, the That's why you gave me for free. <laughs> here's, this is a funny factoid. Uh, the theme song to my podcast, to Couch Riffs, is the theme to Mike Squires that I wrote 20 years ago on a handheld MIDI tablet. It's wow. like a little sequencer that you could toss in your backpack or whatever and hook up headphones to it, ran on batteries. And I brought it on tour 
and I wrote a theme song back then and I had this whole idea where you know the technology wasn't there then Jeff remembers this he's had to hear this poor this story okay. so many times uh, this whole uh, this whole thing is going to be full of those stories <laughs> uh, I had this idea pre-technology where I wanted to have a, a suit jacket <clears throat> that had speakers in it, little tiny speakers. And when I walked into a room, my theme song would play. <laughs> kind of like in a movie when, I, yeah. you know, if there's a character and like if there's a repeating theme in a movie, they, there's always a piece of music that plays when they're introduced to a scene, right? Absolutely. I, I wanted to have that in a real life scenario. I thought, and I still think it's a great party gag. I still think it's a great idea. And now that the technology is there, I really should follow up. But I have, I've just honestly, I, I do too many things. So you can make that's a million dollar idea because I feel like you're describing a fantasy I've had throughout my entire life. <laughs> that's I hope that's more than a million dollar idea because or million dollars ain't what it used to could. I, as a phrase, a million dollar idea. It, it, it's it's priceless because I've thought about that. Whether it's um. You know, theme music, like the Fonzie theme music that, that when you come in and you know it's Fonzie yeah, or yeah. something sweet, you have an audience go, ah, or you know what? Sometimes I want to come into the Undertaker's theme music or make an entrance or Bret Hart. I want to come into some sort of like a wrestler. I want to come up to uh, into a room and make an entrance. Don't Imagine if it music. also had like little triggers where you could, if you said, <laughs> this is so terrible. <laughs> Yeah, where you could tell a joke and then hit a button so that there was canned laughter sure. so that you would like cue the people around you that they should be laughing. Which is like you're describing radio. I mean, if I want to compress a laughter button right now, I'm not going to. But yeah, to do that out in the public, I think is hilarious. It's oh, really hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> I would sell, I'd sell 12 of these to shock jocks. They'd love them. This is why you're perfect. And it's called uh, the shock uh, jock it. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> There's no such thing as a shock shock anymore, but I think that's why it's so great that you're, you've, you found this new platform uh, with, with podcasting. Did, can I ask, did I have any influence on you? Can I take any credit for that? Uh, were, was it the first podcast <laughs> I was on? Was mine? Yeah. Really? I don't know. I'm asking you. I don't know your life. I don't know what you've, you, I mean, I know some of it. We've <laughs> interviewed about some of it. But I don't know. Have you? You don't know my about, life. This is terrible, man. You know why? Because you know, <laughs> he told this story. I sent you <laughs> my autobiography to read before this fucking interview, man. How about how about this? Let's tie it in together. What Jeff said off the air, and I always dress appropriately. Yeah, because yeah. you guys are both Seattle guys. I, I appreciate. I was the first thing I noticed. Sonics, yep. and the yep. reason because it's also my Mike Squires. Yep. See, outfit. I was wondering. Yep. So I have your resume on the back. Well, it needs to be updated. Oh, wait, that, that's his phone number. You just, oh, you're <laughs> screwed. <laughs> you are so screwed right now. You're not releasing the video though. Yes, he is. Yes, I am. I oh, asked Mark. Mark. Yep. Oh, Christ. Did, didn't we discuss that? <laughs> I had to put on my makeup. It's like, yep. Yep. you can't even yep. really see it. I anyway. Know. All right, here. There he is. That's yeah. Oh, that's better, Mike. What did you just do? <laughs> well, I got more comfortable. Oh, oh more, 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 unco more comfortable. I got you. Well, because Jeff and I were discussing before. I mean, I'm an old radio, old school radio guy where I like just the audio. I don't, I mean, not like you can tell, I don't like putting on pants, but just for you, yeah, during quarantine, it's become fun, kind of, you know, see how everyone's like spending their time and everyone's home. And it's a different way to connect with Zoom. But for you and Jeff, I don't know. You guys are or BFFs. Yep. Haven't you? What was the last time you guys saw each other? I wanted to do you a favor. Like a, a few months ago. Oh, okay. First of all, like, I, I want to say for the record, I don't have pants on. <laughs> Good. I don't. Yeah. Um, That's on tape. Uh, and I saw Jeff in. Was it February or was it the first it, week of March? It was a uh, first week, and yeah, right there, end of February. It was like a couple, few weeks before all this stuff started happening. You came over and played some rock, um, and hung out with me at the shop. Yeah. yeah, yep. So it's been a few months. I saw Jeff every day. I was there. I stopped <laughs> yeah. and saw him at the um, uh, at the, the base shop. There, the base shop there, and yeah, I okay. You guys, coffee and just basically, yeah. yeah. That's a kind of that's a nice uh, 
organic transition because obviously you were in Seattle, the bait shop, because you do, uh, I've seen you posting a lot of stuff from the bait shop, Jeff. The base shop. Is that what I just said? I thought you said the bait shop. Maybe that's your, your funny accent. Maybe that's my accent I'm just or, 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 or mispronouncing yeah. it. Uh, it's okay. No, no, no. Yes. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's my day job. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's what, those is uh, awesome. So kind of tell us what you've been up to, I guess, since that's, since the last time you saw Mike, what's been, how, how is Seattle? How are you? I'm, I'm good. Um, I mean, I think we're all just kind of going in, going through this stuff in different ways. Um, and uh, it's just, uh, can I swear? I can't remember yeah. if I can, it's fucking weird, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think I was supposed to have a show the day, the day Seattle shut down, I was supposed to play at the Crocodile. And, uh, you know, not really foreseeing what this was really going to be and how it's lent itself to other things. But uh, it's been difficult. Um, but, you know, I have a four-year-old here at the house now. And uh, it's forced me to look at things differently. I've always, obviously been working on a lot of music and, and doing all that stuff. But uh, I think it's just... I mean, like so many people, it's just forcing you to kind of re-examine who you are and what you do every day. And I sure. think for some people, they're losing their minds and it's showing you, you see their true character. But uh, um, for me, it's just, you know, the, Silas, the, the, our four-year-old here, he can't go to preschool. And, yeah. you know, so it's just, it's been actually really nice, you know, just doing schoolwork, you know, learning to read, you know, uh, counting, trying to keep him occupied. And he understands, he's at the age where he understands there's a sickness. And then the, the sickness led into, Jeff, why are there so many sirens on the television? You know, um, it's forcing, and I hadn't dealt with this stuff in it. The conversations that I've in turn had to have with a four-year-old are, is important because it's bigger than me. <laughs> you know, kids have to are wading through this thing that to us is crazy. It's going to be part of their existence. I mean, it's part of all of our existence, but I couldn't imagine us being that age and now then having to look back at like growing up through what we're dealing with now is crazy. Um, and that's so, all they know. <laughs> yeah, Mike. yeah. Yeah. That's Mike. I was just going to say, Jeff, it must be interesting to explain to a four year old what is happening because it it makes you look at it, digest it, and try to communicate that in a way that you otherwise never would. Like exactly. if you and I were talking about what's going on, we wouldn't break it down into less complex scenarios. We'd be like, oh, this fucking asshole, right. that fucking asshole, these uh -huh. fucking assholes, those fucking assholes. Uh, right, you I mean, you would be blaming politics, you know, and you, you can't you do, do. That a four-year-old. Yeah. And, and what I've learned is <laughs> with a kid, <laughs> uh, well, exactly. What I've actually learned is how much compassion uh, a, a child has for circumstances like this, and you wouldn't expect it. Like he pretty quickly figured out he couldn't go to preschool, like we couldn't go do things, we couldn't go to the park. He had to wear a mask, all this stuff, and you know, the only way you can under get it to understand is that, well, there's a you know, there's people are getting sick. And so we have to stay home. And it's important because I don't want to get you sick and you don't want to get your grandpa sick. That was fairly easy for him to understand. The stuff happening past that uh, with all this other stuff in the world that's going on has been a little bit more challenging. But I have to say, I don't go into it too far, but it's fairly easy to, un to make a child understand that. It's like, well, why are these, why are there so many cops? And sirens and it's like well somebody got hurt well why did he get hurt well he was different i don't know how i mean i just kind of have to wade through it and i've read a lot of stuff online about how to explain this stuff to a child and these mm -hmm. are things that i like i would never have expected to have to do but it's important because me and stacy his mother are the people that are have to make him understand he's going to go into this world past this having to understand you know um, and you're a source right now you're a source. You're turns a out I am. I was, you know, like, and I have so much empathy for parents and teachers, especially. I have some of my students are teachers. God, can you imagine how you're going to have to get kids through this? We have already have built in thoughts, prejudice, all this other stuff that we have to wait. Everybody has to wait through and 
we are, we're seeing that in real time every day, every second. But I think the important thing is probably what we can do, and especially teachers, and unfortunately people in the higher up positions aren't doing it, but we can inform them and help them get through this. And hopefully that's the difference. Because I don't see, it's hard to see anybody our age making any kind of a fucking difference anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're just, just standing in the way of progress, Jeff. Yeah, it <laughs> feels like it. But uh, yeah, it's, it's been an interesting time. But I've been able to do lots of cool music and, and uh, maybe get closer to the, my family, you know, and stuff like that. So, Has it influenced your, your writing? Because it, it's so interesting. And you guys could uh, know this better than, than, than I do, of course. It came out, you know, Duff's album came out last year, Tenderness, before all of this. Yeah, and it's yeah. just gotten worse since then. So obviously he was affected by it then. So I'm just curious, you know, it doesn't go to both of you. I think Has it's a backlash from Duff's album. And this <laughs> yeah, well, let's just, we'll, for now, we'll, 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 yeah, we'll just blame him. We're going to blame him for, for everything for the rest of it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I think that until Loaded gets together and writes some really aggressive, sort of dirty, negative songs, th things are going to continue down a bad path. <laughs> and I agree. News. I agree. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, yeah. point being, it affected him, and, you, you know, you see Bob Dylan releasing music, so has it affected you at all, or what kind of stuff are you writing right now, or, and what are, what are you creating? Uh, I, have, I haven't really, I mean, I've had so much stuff written and ready to come out before this started, and okay. I think, and I've heard other people talk about it. I thought maybe, like, oh, man, this is going to be inspired. Like, I'm not inspired to really write anything. I've been way more inspired having lots of friends and recording bass and doing other stuff. Um, I just haven't had anything to say about it. Like okay. it, there's so much stuff. There's so much information. There's so many people saying things. I just don't really feel the things I need to say. I'm going to say to my friends and my family and the people that I love. I just don't really have anything to say musically in that kind of way. yet. And, and with no apologies, that's just kind of, but I've done tons of stuff. It's just I, but I'd written so much stuff with these records that are coming out and the stuff that I already had that in the can. And what a weird time. But what about you, Mike? How do you feel about that? About your record? No, oh, just about me in general. I, and I love how Jeff is looking <laughs> down yeah. and Mike yeah. is on the lead. I love you it. Really pretty eyes, Jeff. I just want to lead with that. I want to say <laughs> you have beautiful eyes. Yeah, yeah. You have <laughs> great teeth. Yeah, these circles, these 51 year old circles are doing great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess first I would say I think no one, no one would fault you for not writing political songs right now. I just yeah. think, um, I just don't want to hear political songs from fucking old white people. Agreed. Sorry to, I mean, you, we're not young anymore. You're not old, old. You're not Bob Dylan old, but like I, I fucking eye rolled so hard. You could hear my eyes roll in my head when Bob Dylan dropped a, a record about <coughs> Kennedy. I didn't listen <laughs> I mean, to it, by the way. I, I, haven't, I haven't listened, listened to it either. Oh, I couldn't yeah. even make, I couldn't, I can't, I haven't listened to anything he's done for 30 or 40 I years. I mean, I and he's great. He's a legend, but, and I'm glad he's, he's in the world. I'm glad he has had such a, a history, but you know, old people will not drive change. Old, like, old people think that they hold the key. You know what I mean? They think that they are the, the door masters or whatever the fuck. Uh, I will lead you. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, you want, you want this, that, and the other. You want progress. You want change. You want revolution. But, you know, when I say we're standing in the way of progress, I mean that very literally. Yeah, I can't agree with you more. Not, necess not like you and me specifically and no one else our age. I mean, our generation, you know, and everyone older than us. We're, we're in the fucking way. And that doesn't mean that we can't have a perfectly happy, comfortable life going on as we've existed. But, you know, we're 
old. Our experience is different than young people's. Um, the world has moved on and the way people think has moved on. And not that I have some conservative mindset, but it's just, uh, I don't know. That's when how you, I feel about that. Just think about how, I mean, we're getting so deep and philosophical right away. Just think about how a small of a time human beings have been here in the grand scheme oh, and how yeah. much we have changed. And just to even just bring it down to a very, uh, you know, a very relatable point, just look at cell phones, where we were five years ago, 10 years ago. And that's just like one little thing. We're not talking about diseases. We're not talking about points of view. We're not talking about race. But just little things change so quickly. Yeah, so yeah. I think it's kind of, yeah, I have that sense. I never want to be that kind of a, um, it's hard not to be arrogant as a human being, as, as a homo sapien, because you, that's how you are. You have this consciousness. You want to feel worthy in the, in the world, but you, you can't, you don't know everything. You, you, even as much as, as knowledgeable as you are, your life experiences, the education, at the end of the day, we're not, we're not X-Men. We don't have a superpower to really heighten our, our level. I mean, maybe down, you know, hundreds or million, thousands of years down the road, we can get to some sort of a, a cerebral way of rebuilding our kind of like society and, and way of thinking. But uh, no human is, that's why I, I, I that's why uh, you, you may call me, it's, it's simple, like I, I simplify it like this. I did not have like a human ego. That's why I introduced myself as Brandon. I'm not Brando. I don't have that kind of ego. I just, it's, it's just like as a human being, is anyone that cool? I mean, maybe if you're Squires or Jeff Rouse or Duff, you're that cool. But I just, no one's that cool to know everything. That's just a uh, no. Nobody thing. knows anything. Yeah, I mean, there are things that are like, that we recognize as, well, this is, there's strong evidence to support this. This is, this is the truth. But is that something worth, is that, is that knowing something? I guess it depends on what do you consider knowing? We're all in the matrix, you know? So I kind of just, I got my own little, you know, my own little, uh, I don't want to call it safe space. I don't want to call it a bubble either, but I got my own little universe. You know, I, I, I'm aware as much as I can of what's around me, but I can control what I can control. And right now it's, you know, talking to you guys, like, it's like, what am I good at? What can I do? Yep. And that's, you know, right now talking to you guys about, you know, rock and, Philosophy. Yeah. Like I said, this is the first thing. This is the first thing since all this happened that I've done. Um, I don't. Well, thank you. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not saying it that way, but it just felt oh, like I, I like I, uh, I, I. It just felt like to me it was time to take a back seat and let people that let people have a, a voice. Not that my voice means anything in the first place, and I guess that's the point. I mean, we can release music, we can do all that stuff. It just doesn't feel very important to me, and other people can feel completely different um i just think and that's it's okay time, i think it's for me it's time for other people to have a voice whether whatever that is um i don't feel comfortable for me i just don't I really feel like i had much to say about it you know yeah no i do and, I, and that's a simple way of saying it i i feel a lot of i feel everything and, I, and i'm watching everything and i'm talking to people about it but man i don't want to tell the world my feelings about it because there's only so awful. much room on the podium there's only so much i can i'm standing back there's people that need a voice they you need know? The, the facebook status they they need to let everyone know well, well there's those people but there's other people that legitimately it's their time like lo, let's oh okay. let's, sure. let's address this stuff the people like i'm not the voice of anything i write some songs i like so writing songs it's super fun that's my thing. I think that's important though. It, it's kind of knowing your role and not putting yourself in a place that's comfortable. And if you're ever in a place that you want to express yourself that way, cool. You know, I think it's just, this has been a, a really messed up equalizer of what's happened. <laughs> it's just like, we're all, that's how I've always looked at it. You know, we're all in the same wavelength, same, you know, we can all go out like the dinosaurs, just like that. And all this other stuff doesn't matter. So while I'm here, I'm going to try to live in the moments and just uh, enjoy music. And it, it sucks that, you know, what we all like doing is, you know, going to concerts or, in, or, or playing in the case of both of you. That's what makes it difficult, you know, for people being home. So mental health is difficult. I am very great, uh, grateful and lucky that I can do radio from home. 
you guys can do, I mean, Mike, you can do your podcast. I mean, Jeff, you can, obviously you can record and make music, but it, it's, I'm assuming it's not the same as going out there. So is there a sort of, is there a lack, is there a lacking or is it, has that been hard to get through in quarantine for a musician to, you know, maybe not testing, test that material in front of an audience or just get out there, jam with friends, you know? Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> uh, I'll give you the short version. Okay. <laughs> we, uh, when the when the pandemic first, whenever all the quarantining first started, I went from having a job, like a full time job, to having two jobs, and um, so I was working sixty hours a week and commuting three hours a day, and and still doing the podcast. So. Since this thing happened, this year has gone by so fast for me. I know the thing is, I, and I know that most people, not everyone, but most people have struggled to struggled with the idea of having to be at home. All of a sudden you have less personal space. You're not, you know, but people have also had the freedom to, for better or worse, um, tap into all the different media sources. They've, if they have had it in them, they've been very creative and there's been an explosion of all kinds of cool content online. Um, so that all that stuff didn't affect me. It affected me in a different way, I think, than almost the entire population. Wow. So I, I did both. Like I, I put my nose to the grindstone and um, continued to put out two podcasts a week, started a second podcast, started <laughs> recording a solo record and worked 60 hours a week until just a couple weeks ago. It was, and I was sleeping four hours a night. Oof. The only time I talk to Mike usually is in his, in a frantic short drive between his jobs. He was either, yeah, it was. He just you just sounded exhausted every time I talked to you. It was a pretty know. awful time. Yeah, I'm glad you. I'm glad. I, I'm. Yeah, I'm glad you're not doing the two jobs thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, it's. Cr I mean, I just was doing what I had to do to get through the stuff. If I would have been uh, slower to get the second job, I would have gotten the Fed and the unemployment like everyone else. But instead to make up for some of the lost salary um, from all the cutbacks. Uh, you know, I was like, well, I better get a second job. That's just how, that's how I grew up. That's how I am. And, uh, you know. I have two jobs and this, it's not including this podcast. This right. podcast is, I mean, yes, I'm in radio. This is just some, it's become a passion project that I've somehow integrated into my actual professional job. Yes. But at the same time, this is not my job. I don't get paid for this. And I have another one that I do. Uh, that's not radio related. So it is, it's an insanely difficult and taxing. Um, I'm glad you're sleeping though. That was one thing. I got plenty of energy. Yeah. That Michael, Michael uh, the pandemic, no more alarm clock. I want to live a life with no alarm clock. Do you want to hear something funny? Because I was waking up at four 30 every morning, right? And no. going to sleep four 30 AM. Nice. Now, and I would go to sleep between 12 and 1230. So uh, I don't even set an alarm anymore. Like I don't set an alarm. If, I have, to, if I have to be to work at seven, I don't have to set an alarm to be oh, there. Like I, wake up, I wake up at six, you know, I wait, feed the dogs. It's actually pretty nice. I you sound like I'm you're the one old. with the four-year-old. I mean, Jeff, aren't you the one that's not supposed to be sleeping with a, a four-year-old? Oh, it's, yeah. Uh, uh, I, yeah, I, I get plenty of sleep. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, not plenty, but I mean, I do, I have to set an alarm. Um, I didn't, well, the weird thing was, is, you know, through all the COVID stuff and I didn't ever have to set an alarm, but of course I've been doing the same thing for years. And, and uh, so like, just like Mike, your eternal alarm clock just kind of wakes you up anyway. But the funny thing is when I'm thinking about this and I talked to Mike, me and Mike, uh, we're kind of going back a little bit. So many of our friends kind of, and they rely on playing music for a living. Yeah. You know, whether you're a, a level touring act or, you know, 
our friends from in town who play five, four, whatever they can do, whatever they can do. Every, and that's how, and they're great. They play in a cover band a couple nights a week and then they play a gym or whatever it is. They are lessons. Cool. Lessons, all this stuff. Me and Mike, it's, it's funny. Um, me and Mike, through all this stuff, generally all of our, since we've known each other, always had jobs. Like, uh, kind of, I don't know, you know, I grew up that way. Mike did, but we just always knew music. I think we both had this thing like, we wanted music to make us money. And sometimes we made a little money, but generally we knew that it was probably, we're all going to get fucked in the end somehow. <laughs> so we got to have a job, you know? I, I um, hear you. But I guess my point of this is, and I'm so grateful for that because when things did happen and I could get unemployment, I was grateful for that. And, and, and I'm, I'm so glad. That, but uh, God, it was just crazy to see so many people I know and other people I didn't know. I mean, they were doing anything they could to like, you know, and it took them a while. I, I know um, after a while, unemployment did catch up to some of those independent work, like however that worked. But man, like who would have thought like that is wiped out, like gone, you know, and it probably still will be for the foreseeable future, you know. Um, uh, and I miss playing, but I don't, I have no desire to go out and play a show right now for, in any way. Well, what about, and you both can speak to this, the, the danger of the local music menu. You know, mm -hmm. it's not just the artists, but these small little great clubs that, a lot of you know. cities, they were already on the way out, which is, I, I mean, know. they were, you know, that's the sad thing. I think a lot of them are, are gone and they're not going to come back because, you know, as, although it's, it's probably going to turn around because, a lot of businesses that you're going to see a lot of empty storefronts in cities mm -hmm. and that's going to drive uh, leasing and real estate prices down. And then, then maybe there'll be more room like in the core, in the heart of cities for the creative arts. Cause I don't know. Yeah, he's right. In Seattle, the last couple of years, it had been happening slowly. Anyway, uh, those clubs couldn't afford to stay open with the, the way the city was, growing um and uh, but the funny thing is well not funny thing is so we we all know that you know even like you know there's uh, stadiums and arenas and down to 500 seat venues or clubs that touring acts do and you know they book those things so far out um so we you know no matter if things opened today which thank god they're not they're not because we're not ready to do that but I mean, it's going to be, till, even if things open today, it would be till next year. I mean, I granted you see the big stadium act saying, okay, we're postponing till then. And then, but They're just you know, saying I've, it. I, I've, yeah, I've started uh, getting emails from, I've got, it doesn't matter who, like some club bookers and owners and saying, Hey, you know, they're not to me, but uh, uh, CC to a lot of people. Like when these venues open, we're going to need your help because we, it's going to be completely reliant on local fans. But with the subtext of these emails also being, we don't know how it's going to work. We're only going to be be able to open at 30% capacity. So if you want these rooms to stay open, we need you to come play for free, basically, is what they're saying. But we'll Which, give you five drink tickets. And yeah, well, because, you know, at, at, at a 500-seat capacity, uh, your local watering hole where you go see your bands play. Um, at, well, even if it was, you know, if you can have 100 people in there, I don't know how they'll get people to distance is a whole other conversation. But to only have 100 people, that's just going to pay for that sound guy, that PA. Like, it's, there's not going to be any money for artists to make once it opens. And plus, to me, like, when you go see music, yeah. and when we go play music, we're there to play music to kind of let go and have a great time. I can't imagine playing having a venue open right now with only, okay, well, we have to have, it would be so stressful to go in there. They're about to put plexiglass. If you're singing, you're spitting on people. Like, I don't know. How can you enjoy yourself? I have yeah. no idea. Yeah. You know I'm an idea man. <laughs> okay, here we go. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. We've all been to the grocery store. There are the, and you know, we also see it when people, there's an arrow and it's like one way, everyone in this fucking aisle, you walk this way, walk this way, follow the arrow. I know you're 70 years old. I know you've been driving for 55 years. Okay. <laughs> you know how to look at the arrow, look down, follow the arrow, go that way. And then you get to the thing and it's like, there's tape markers. Like you stand here, next person stand here. Right. 
here's the thing in the music venues <laughs> it's taped off like seating but everyone's standing and then right up in the front in the middle there's a carousel is that what it's called <laughs> no a merry-go-round sure this is, is this is a this is a social distanced mosh pit <laughs> you get a <laughs> You, you just get on the carousel. Yeah. And then the carousel goes around in a circle and everyone, you have to keep these <laughs> spaces in between you and then everyone's going around in the mosh pit, but you have a safe distance. Boom. I like it. There we go. Uh, I'm going to start marketing the mosh go round. <laughs> mosh go rounds. I think that I can probably sell probably <laughs> 200 of them to uh, Live Nation. So that will get me... Uh, out of the red. Why don't, so, how about this? Why don't you play in front of bumper cars? It's a bumper car concert. It's just you and the person. That's pretty good too. That's well, everyone good. would still have to wear a. They would have to wear one of those uh, welding masks. Right? That's yeah. fine. So it makes it feel like they're a real race car driver. You know, that's that's fine. Oh yeah. I honestly, we just need to come. We need to like mandate uh, hazmat suits or a really cool. I don't. Uh, Halo costumes, like you're. Everyone needs to just turn into a robot, and then that's yeah. that's. Just, we are, we that's all are learning that mandates mean nothing to a lot of people. Like, <laughs> I, I, really, you can't tell me what to do is really the common thing. Mike's always been really good at that. I think this is probably the first time in Mike Squire's life where he probably isn't. You can't tell me what to do to anybody anymore. I think he's being pretty, pretty mellow through all of this. <laughs> and there's a if there's a rule, and it's like, all right, everyone has to do this. Typically, I'm like, no, Mike's already, not that guy. I already did that. I did that in the Marine Corps, and we don't do that anymore. Yeah, yeah. But now, you know, this is different. Yep, more different. This is way more different. -er. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, so I, I, I don't know where that leaves anything, I guess, with music, other than, and then, like, how do you release? Like, before all this started, I had a couple things ready to kind of, and I don't even really know what to do about that. I mean, I know what's happening, but I don't Can know... You well, yeah. can you catch us up of what is happening uh, where you left us? You know, right. since last time, last time on the Jeff Browse uh, interview, uh, yeah. you have just, I think you were just on the cusp of releasing the Gemini. Right. Mm -hmm. So that, that was so well received. So yeah. update us. What's been going on since the Gemini? What do you, what have you been working well, on? What did you have yeah. in the can just to update us? Yeah, well, I did. So we, you know, we, like I'm not go, won't go through all that stuff. If you want to hear about that, I guess you can go to that podcast. But um, so <laughs> kind of uh, moved forward and, and started writing, and and it was really gratifying and really awesome to go through that. I wasn't expecting really much out of it, and it was super fun. So I started to do it again and recorded some more songs, and and uh, you know, in the kind of the meantime, I actually had a, a band, um, and you know, did the record kind of the same way, um and then kind of finished it and uh started kind of getting ready um mike mccready has a label here in town called hockey talker um, which he kind of just releases records of from stuff he likes and i guess really to go back the gemini was something i never the reason i kind of started that was not to do any of that and i was actually just going to record that stuff and release it for free and then other things happened and then uh, recorded this other stuff and I had posted a couple of clips and Mike heard them and then he's like well and the cool thing about Mike is he just says I love these songs do whatever you want I'll we'll release it so cool. which is great and then in the meantime another uh, just kind of a label in LA which I'll make an announcement about that so it's not a big label it's just a really cool thing had to kind of get lawyers and do a contract and all that stuff, which is something I didn't want to really do, but huh. it's I'm great that people um, like what I have done. Um, huh. Not expecting to change the world, but it's really <laughs> gratifying and really super fun for me. Um, but then this stuff happens and then they kind of wonder, well, like, well, people's attention span is pretty short. There's a lot of content. How do you, the, uh, the hockey talk to release is a pretty easy thing. You know, um, it'll be like 507 inches. It'll be super cool. Um, but you, I'm not going to be out there promoting it. You know, so how do you do that? I mean, other than this kind of thing, uh, podcasts, other kind of thing. But you're I'll not going to be out there. You. You're, you're not going to be out there playing shows. 
So yeah. dealing that with a label and having those conversations is a whole new thing because we're figuring, we're all figuring this stuff out as we go. So like, how do you, how do you do that with your, with no live shows and a Ask lot the of Beatles. Uh, what's that? Ask the Beatles. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly. So, um, so I'm super stoked about it finally coming out, but I don't, really know uh it'll be that it's it'll happen soon and uh we're kind of working out how to do that and if it even matters to people i suppose i think it does i think music always matters to people i don't mean it like that but it's just there's a like mike was pointing out there's just so much stuff out in the world are people's attention span going to be more than that you'll post something and then there's another one, you know, and you can't really go out and support it. Um, and that's okay. That's okay. I, that's not why I started this particular thing in the first place. But uh, um, it's been interesting conversations to have with peop uh, the label and, and other things, my bandmates. And, you know, what are my, like, the drummer in my band's a critical care worker. He's a, um, mm. So, and it, it's just been interesting to figure out what's important to people, you know. Do, do you think there's part of you that would have been disappointed if you didn't have a, that kind of reception? Because I believe you when you say you just wanted to make music and put it out there, but to get to a point where you're signing contracts and the label, even though you're trying to avoid it, is there part of you that would have been disappointed or is it just like now that, you know, it's like, wow, it's like even when I'm not really trying, not to say that you're not trying, but again, it's, it wasn't your goal, but it just goes to show you that your, your stuff is still, is, there are people who want it. Even when you don't think people who don't want it, there are people that don't want it. It's no matter what you do, people are going to want it because it's you. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. I, I don't, it's a, it's a weird thing for at my age and what me and Mike have, stuff like me and Mike have done all our lives. And we've had, me and Mike together have been through a lot of different record deals and different kinds of things. And ups and downs and this, those conversations like oh my god you know um and that's and i'm blessed and i know mike probably feels the same we're blessed to have gone through all that stuff and it's been ups and the you know it's just the craziest stuff there i generally have anxiety in, anyway but thinking about uh that's why i didn't have anxiety about doing it in the first place because i had just written mike i guess i was filling him in while i was doing it I just kind of wrote the, for the first one, just wrote these songs on my garage band and it was super fun for me. And I got to do exactly what the fuck I want to do. I didn't care. Like it's cause it's, it wasn't very rock and it wasn't like, I just was going to like, Oh, I'll put it on band camp or something for free. And then other things just kind of happened. It didn't, it wasn't huge, but it did way more than I thought it would. And in turn gave me enough confidence in what I was doing to want to write more of those songs. Okay. And then, and then when those conversations started happening about people wanting to like the vinyl thing was super and having Mike support it is super um, awesome to me for one, because I like Mike a lot. He's, we've done a lot of cool things together, but I didn't have to pay for the goddamn vinyl. <laughs> it's expensive. So that's great. And, and it comes out of the Pearl Jam machine and that's an easy thing with this other label thing. Like it does, like, I can't believe I like, I never would have thought that like going back for a month and a half with lawyers about these little tiny converse, little lines in the contract is something I never wanted to ever do again, <laughs> ever, like ever. Like, and it's, it's that thing where Mike has always been so good. It's like, you can't tell me what to do. Like, I didn't want to, as long as I can just do what I want to do, if it's good, that's great. If it's bad, at least that's, it's what I want to do. And I, and I do other stuff. I've, to work with a band called Losi Stellar, like a great metal band playing bass. And there's always, I can do that stuff. But this, the Gemini, it's a particular thing for me just to kind of do that uh, part. It, it stems from me being 16 years, years old and the music that I liked growing up and the other ways that I can kind of filter that through my adult self now. And I love being able to do that, but I don't want anybody to tell me like, what to do <laughs> with that you know i want to do the artwork the way i want to do it and i just i'm going to write it on my computer and i'm going to have who i want to play on it and for good or for bad that's what it's going to be i think it ties into 
how you're looking at life now and the priorities and what's important and the voice you want to share. And mm-hmm. that ties into the music that you, you're, you're putting out. It's like, this is me. This is what I want to be. And I'm comfortable with that. Right. If other people, for whatever reason, like it or don't, that's okay. Because this is you and that's, and that's, you know, you're comfortable in your skin. I think that's, that's awesome. And the fact that you, the, the best part, I think, is just the confidence that you were given because now what, it's the, the Gemini affair now. So what, what is well, that? Okay, okay, so yeah, that's, it, it is, uh, during this whole time, it turned out that, uh, it doesn't really matter, a, a kid from like Michigan, I think, had copyrighted the Gemini. Because like I said, when I first did the first thing, I wasn't even, I wasn't thinking about any legal ramifications. I would just called it something and released it. Like I never thought, I wasn't ever expecting it to, in the meantime, that name got copyright so i had we are changing it to the gemini which is fine it's going to be called the gemini affair and that's, that's cool right? and um and uh that's and that's totally great you know and i think part of the anxiety all this other stuff is all this stuff was written last year leading into the beginning of this year and the, the worldwide conversation about anything has changed so much like an, i'm glad i'm not trying to write a record now through this would be much different than these songs are because it wasn't, we weren't going through any of this stuff and it, the tone of everything, if I was trying to write now would be extremely different hmm. than, it, than now. But at the same time, that gives me a little bit of like, wow, this, I hope people just want to hear music because <laughs> it's not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not trying to uh, voice uh, any kind of opinion about anything that's going on now or, or anything. It was just how I was writing songs, how I write songs. No, I think that, that, but you that, second guess great. all this stuff, you know, there's, sure. it's a weird time to be releasing music. Um, and I'm stoked that it's going to happen. We'll see. Well, you know? uh, obviously keep us updated and, uh, For sure. you know, I'm, 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 I'm looking forward to it, you know? Um, but what about you, Mike? What do you, I, I can never tell if it's sarcasm or not with you. You have the best head, deadpan face. And are yeah. you actually working on solo music right now? Is that, is that yeah let me first i want to talk ah. about jeff a little bit okay <laughs> awesome. because i Thanks. think that um uh everything that he said i can back up because i've been talking to him through the even the writing of the earliest uh stuff his solo stuff when it was called gemini before it even was called that i think yeah, yeah. and uh the interesting thing about it is i think a lot of people heard it and were and they thought this is so much different than anything jeff's done before but having played music with jeff for 20 years i've heard of course all the songs that he's contributed to the projects that have been used but we've both contributed or pitched songs that didn't quite fit and so i've heard jeff's voice and when i say voice i don't mean his singing voice i mean his musical voice for years and the cool and interesting thing about the Gemini to me is that it feels like the full blossom of of what were just seeds or ideas that because you know we were both contributing members and not like the 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 uh, the primary creator in in the any project we've been in uh, now that he's the primary, unen- like unencumbered, that, that, and not to say that like we were restricted in any way, but in the circumstance he's in, he can fully develop every one of those ideas that he likes. And it's, it's incredible. It's really great. I love it. Thanks. And Mike. so that voice that he has and his musical voice and just, you know, I know he's a huge Cure fan and, and, Uh, 80s like goth and cure and uh uh the cult and you hear all that all that stuff but then you just you hear him and it's it's great so it's funny that the cure is actually the last band i think i saw live before the pandemic wow it was at austin city limits uh first time first time in austin texas it was Uh was great uh obviously went for 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 gnr uh, but the it was the last day the cure were, were, were they finished uh, their headlining and 
They sound did, exactly the same. Did, <laughs> they, did, yeah. did you, did you, awesome. are you a fan of them or would, was it one of those things you were like, oh, I'll just check it out. I like them. They're cool. I, I, um, I'm not going to be a poser about it. I like them. <laughs> I like mainly their, I just know their radio hits, but I've never yeah. did a deep dive into oh, any of that stuff. Yeah. I yeah. saw them at the garden a few years ago. Uh, I had to put it this way. I had to explain uh, to my girlfriend. She's like, why is Robert's, why, she didn't know his name. Like, why is he still wearing that makeup? Like, that's, that's Robert Smith, man. What, that's what, just. <laughs> what else would he do? You know? Um, yeah, I just. It'd be like yeah. Kiss taking their makeup off. I know. She said the same thing. She's like, why is, because we with GNR, she's like, why is he wearing that, le the white leather jacket? I'm like, yeah. I don't know. Yep. She likes Dave Matthews, so that's that's but, okay. That's okay. That judge, but that judgment on her. Uh, so no, that's that's great. So are you doing the same thing, Mike? Then, like where you were never <laughs> limited in your because uh, you were kind of just like filling out a baseball roster. You're you're playing your role, but now, like how Jeff is the main voice, and he's leading that ship. <laughs> are you doing the same thing with your solo? Is that something that you've always wanted to do? It's not something I've always wanted to do. It's something I've never wanted to do. Okay. Um, but I all I love to be a part of a team. I love to be a part of an ensemble. Mm -hmm. And for, uh, sometimes uh, I think it hasn't always seemed like it, just because I can be a hardhead. But that's where but I for like the, to but be. But for the greater good of the situation, always. Well, maybe, probably, but I don't know. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, no, I've never wanted to be the primary songwriter. I've never wanted to be the singer. I wanted to play the guitar and and go ream tune teen tune teen tune teen tune and and uh, and mostly I've always just wanted to play shows and and be play and be on stage with my friends and uh but i'm an idea man <laughs> and so i i had a concept that came really organically it wasn't and uh so it's a, technically it's a concept album that i'm making mm. um and i won't i'm not going to go into too much detail because i just haven't put that much of it out there but it's a concept album. It's a, and I'm not joking. It's a double album. What? My first solo record. It's, it's this way, it's, <laughs> I've, I've, I've been, I've, I've uh, been able to hear a few, a few of these bits of music, and it's amazing. It's more music than you, than it's more music than than what is reasonable. Let me just say that. Wow. And there are more songs than. Go big or go home. Wow, that's. <laughs> and I think that I'll do a vinyl only release. I'm not sure how I'll do it, but I'm going to, I'll do, you know, just all the regular things. I'll make some videos and, um, how, long have, been, and, um, how long have you been working on it? I started writing songs maybe last, you know, cause I, I moved upstate and I just, it was just like my wife, her time was split between Brooklyn and upstate until the pandemic hit and so i just was like i just started kind of writing songs on the couch and hmm. um like i said i just uh yeah i picked up the acoustic guitar and learned a couple songs and was like i wonder if i could write a song and then i did and then i recorded them and now now this is happening so that couch has been good to you I, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> let me, let me. I am working on uh, the solo record is a real thing. It's awesome. uh, and uh, I'm hoping it'll be out before the end of the year. It's a lot of work because I do I, work I, full I, time. I, I also have couch riffs podcast, which I'm, I don't even know how many episodes I'm in. 80. I think I'm in 80 episodes, maybe more. Awesome. I'm almost 90 episodes now. I remember, I remember when, when you started. started. Yeah. Is, uh, was Duff the first official episode? Duff was the first bit. Um, or was that the, the so, catalyst to the idea? To the idea? Uh, I had the idea, and my friend David Bader was leaving town. He was moving out of New York, and I said, why don't you come over and be on Couch Riffs before you leave? 
because I want to start having guests every once in a while. And it was really fun. We did a Judas Priest song, mm -hmm. one that Jeff and I have done before. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then Duff was in town. And I said, why don't you come be on Couch Riffs? And he's like, oh, I don't know. What, what, what do you do? What do we do? And he came over. We didn't know what we were going to do. You know, we we picked the song. And this is a true story. We picked that Jackson 5 song. And he was like, he was like, I'm not going to be able to learn this in five minutes. Like I have, like I have to leave and go catch the train back and meet, meet my family in the city. I have to be there in, you know, 45 minutes or whatever. And I was like, you can play that. And he's like, uh, and I was like, all right, you play the guitar. I'll play the bass. I'll learn the bass. Line. <laughs> and that's, why, that's <laughs> why I play the bass in the episode and he plays the guitar and he killed it. Let that's me just funny. say also, I'll back up. Duff's a very modest musician. Like he's never, he, you would never hear Duff say, oh, I'm a good bass player, but he's a great bass player. And he could have crushed that bass line. <laughs> that I did. Um, so he was the first guest where my wife said, why don't you call it something? And there you go. Boom. I remember as soon as I saw that, I'm like, he needs to do this. So obviously, it's um, everyone saw the potential in it. Well, uh, so a, I, I like who would have thought Mike was a precursor to so much of this stuff that's happening now. You know what I mean? It's funny. <laughs> I, everyone's doing it. I know everyone's yeah. doing it the, on the news, Saturday Night Live. You know these late night talk show hosts. So when are we gonna get the uh, the Ralph Squires double concert via Zoom? So when when you're you know, the Gemini Affair is out. When Mike Squire's uh, show tune double album is out, are you going to do a, you know, a live stream concert together? The technology's not there yet to play in different places live. It just, you know, how did Post Malone do it? How, how did uh, they do that Nirvana thing with uh, Travis Barker in Post Malone? That wasn't, I don't think that was, they weren't doing that live. Yeah. I, that was taped. Yeah, I mean they, so, they 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 played it live then, like they acted like well, they were live. playing it live. Um, oh, go ahead, Mike. So uh, there, you've seen a number of people making videos like this. I've been working on them since the week after I started my sixty-hour work week, so it's taken me actual months. But this week, I'm launching the first of like eight videos that I've been working on, and they are full bands drums and whatever like a drummer playing and recording uh you know i'm playing bass on most everything you know guitars keys vocals everything like a just like a band um and but you have to do it kind of like making a record so the drummer goes first and then the file gets passed around and then I play on it and then the guitar player or the, you know, and so that's mm -hmm. how it goes. Then you, you mix it and then you, you film as you're tracking so that the video is, is an actual live recording of when you played the music, you know, mm -hmm. but then you have the studio quality recording that you sync the video, the edited video up to. I just gave away all the magic. Uh, that, that, that's the way all that stuff's kind of working. I mean, I think the post. Yeah, yeah, yes. So we went. Another anything. thing, yeah. So I'm I'm gonna release the first video this week, and I'm fucking pumped about it because it sounds great. You, I haven't even sent it to you yet, have I, Jeff? No, I've I've known about all the stuff, and I know what you're doing, but I have not yet to see full. You've shown me little clips of people doing it stuff individually. I have yet to hear and see the thing. So the big, the biggest big one of all of them is, um, is not, is not the first one. I don't want to, I don't want to blow my load all, all <laughs> front. Um, but they all sound great. They look really good. Um, I'm going to start actually getting creative with my recording locations because, you know, technology, we're at a place with technology yeah. where you don't have to be at home in your studio. You know, you have a laptop. It's a rechargeable battery. You have yeah. a USB that's bus powered. You don't have to plug it in. And mm -hmm. you plug your instrument into that. Your phone is charged up like nothing needs shore power. 
Mm-hmm. You can do that. I could go down. I could go anywhere. I could be on the back of a flatbed truck on the freeway, you know, which is actually something that I've thought about. Of course, yeah. Because yeah. I'm an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> and, so, and you're going to release it where? Like, when are you? It's going to be this week. So where can we? I know I'm going to, I follow you, you know, we're friend, Facebook friends, so I'll see it. But where can I'll the average it, Joe? It'll go up on Facebook. It'll go up on the Couch Riffs YouTube channel which you should follow if you're listening and um, it'll go up on Instagram. I've reached out to a couple of magazines hoping and websites, hoping that they might, uh, you know, if I had all the money in the world, I would try, <laughs> pro- I would try to promote it in a way that a real media organization would, but I don't have a lot of power in that. <laughs> I'm just out here making stuff and hoping that people like it and share it. So you're doing pretty good. You, I've yeah. seen just like I get amazed when my interviews get picked up by yeah. uh, news outlets. So is Couch Riffs. Yeah, so yeah. Same. People, people know. People know. And so as long as you keep putting the product out there, and obviously you have the creativity and uh, the know-how how to make it unique, not to make it just a, just another podcast. Right. It's, people are gonna recognize it, and I think that's a. Uh, that's, that's incredible. So I can't I wait. To we were talking about this earlier where you're saying as a, as a one man operation, some weeks you feel flush. Some weeks you're like, uh, how am I going to pull this together? And then yeah. just do it. You just got to do it. And through uh-huh. all of this, mm-hmm. like a absolute, like an absolute fool. I had, uh, did I mention that I was an idea man, you guys? <laughs> I think it says it on the back of your baseball yeah, card. Yeah, yeah. I, I covered that. up the phone number this time. I think that's going to be my next, my next, um, <laughs> that'll be my next card. I have my, my business uh, idea, man. I had this idea for a new podcast and I knew that I, I wanted to do a podcast with this friend of mine, uh, the Reverend Jamie. And he's a, a former pro BMX guy and um, he owns a screen printing business with his lady and they do all of, of my screen printing. And I try to direct as much business to them as I possibly can. Cause they're independent uh, business and great folks. And, and he's a really funny guy and uh, very, yeah, you know, he's, I love him. And I wanted to do a podcast with him. And I, so I just uh, kind of, you sleep on that a couple of times. And if you're an idea, man, like, uh, I don't know, like me, for instance, uh, <laughs> eventually it comes to you. And so uh, maybe you guys have noticed I've posted an, uh, a survey a couple of times in the last couple of months. <laughs> have you have you seen the survey, I Jeff? Have. Yep, I have. Have you seen it, Brandon? Remind me. I feel like I have. It's a, it was a survey that said what? Uh, go take this survey and just enter into each of the decade slots, starting with the 60s all the way up until now. What is your favorite record from the 60s, your favorite record from the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, 2000s, and the teens? So six decades. And uh, people, I don't know, 100 people or so have gone and taken it already, which means... 600 records although you'd be surprised how many of those slots in the 80s all say appetite for destruction (laughs) and so um you know obviously uh, this is this is a an album review podcast and it's called golden shower of hits (laughs) named after the great circle jerks album and song (laughs) And if you don't, if you're not familiar with it, the song Golden Shower of Hits is a medley of 70s AM radio classics done short, fast, and punk rock. And they tie together. And so we have a very punk rock uh, approach to these album reviews that we do. And we cover one of the songs on every album in a punk rock, format and uh, and there's some pretty funny you know there's some <laughs> pretty funny shit when um, you're launching it huh when are you uh, launching it when is well, it i'm waiting for uh, oddly enough i mean i think we're ready to launch we're waiting for some art 
work from okay. from a guy to get back. That's just like the our little avatar, and that's it. I think. I mean, that's gonna be rad. This week or next week, it it should be fun. I think. You know, uh, if you're still fucking listening, I'm still talking. If you can, <laughs> if, if if you've enjoyed hearing my voice. You'll love the podcast. Yeah. I feel um, like I've had like 23 years of Eternal Mike Squires podcast in my life. Yeah. Like just, I mean, this is like daily, like I'd get 10 hours of podcasts a day on tour with Mike. This is what it is all day, <laughs> all day long. It's great. Lucky you. <laughs> it's amazing. No, it is. It's amazing. It's no, amazing. I know. All this stuff Mike does is a complete, complete accurate representation of who this person is every day in his life. And it's amazing because it, it completely gives Mike a place. It's a, it's a perfect vehicle for you to do yeah. all this stuff. Cause it's exactly who you are. Like, you know, they, if you don't know Mike, you know, this, like you, this is you completely. Yeah. 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 The, I, you know, that's not a character. I mean, if well, I, no, sometimes you can't I'm, make that I mean, up. I'm, but sometimes, I'm in bed right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Nice. Yes. Without yeah, pants, uh, without pants. Cast, yeah, 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 for sure. Well, I, I said that earlier. I mean, you, you you found your perfect vehicle, your your perfect platform, and I felt that way after meeting you that first time. And <laughs> I've wanted to have you back on the podcast, but I we always were like, you know what? Let's since you were in Brooklyn at the time, I'm like, well, you didn't realize I've been up here for two years. It hasn't. I can't believe it's been that long. I know. I didn't know you like you. I thought you had like family there. I didn't know you officially. I also do. Well, there you go. So yeah. I'm not a complete, I, I, I'm kind of in the loop. I have a half loop going yeah. on. So, how are so, you? How am I doing? Well, I'm, I'm here in Queens with three, three cats. cats. Where in Queens? Woodside. Woodside. Is that Woodside, um, Queens. out? I think I know where Woodside is. It's like, uh, what's your train? Is that the... Uh, four, four, I have no idea because I drive everywhere. <laughs> I, I'm lucky I know my way to the bathroom in my own apartment. I have, like, if I, without a GPS, I walk into a wall. It's, it's horrendous. But right. I, see, you didn't know, because we, we have, I mean, even though we kind of keep in touch, I, I moved back um, from Long, you know, Long Island. Uh, I moved out here in September. And it's been interesting. We're talking about how like, being hunkered up is my first time living with my girlfriend. And sometimes that can go bad, especially since, uh, you know, two people living together for the first time. But we we get along. Uh, the only thing, and I tease her about it, that every Wednesday night, uh, and maybe I'll, I'll ask you guys if you're going to put on live streams. And that's how we'll kind of, you know, um, wind things down to see what you, we have to look forward to in the future other than the releases themselves. But every Wednesday, and my listeners laugh at this, Dave Matthews plays an entire like old concert from last year or the nineties or whatever. It's like it's on Nugs TV, by the way. So uh so Nugs TV every Wednesday. Oh, so, she, reference? so she's got a problem. So she's got to put uh he puts the connects the laptop to a big screen TV. She has like a giant Dave Matthews dance party every Wednesday. <laughs> I respect the guy, but I'm usually in my laptop watching the most vile horror movie. You know, I want to be in the same room. I don't want to, why do I have to go into the bedroom just because she wants to enjoy Dave Matthews? <laughs> so between that, uh, I may have had COVID in January before we all knew what it was. I rarely get sick, but I had like a hundred degree fever for like almost a week. <laughs> also, so it was, it was not good. And I probably have almost died a few times because I have three cats now. Because you talked back, because you tried to turn off Dave Matthews. No, not because of that, Even, <laughs> and I and I also tell her like when I what I say here on the podcast, you know, she it's 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 all in good fun. But the three cats that I have now, so it's not just like I, I don't know how a four year old has a four year old is. I don't have any kids, but and I'm sure you're not allergic to your to your child. But I also hug these and sleep with my cats, mm -hmm. and I'm already allergic. So there are times like I have to leave the apartment in, in, in order to breathe. So as of, I think this week, I have to get the allergy shot once a week. For like, oh, wow. So it's, right. I, I have an air purifier going. It's because I'm so, even though I'm a homebody, I at least would go out more often, go out to work and stuff. Sure, and yeah, sure. I could work uh, and do radio from anywhere. As you were saying, Mike, you can record from anywhere. Right. But that's not good for me. I'm just home all day. 
and breathing in cats <laughs> and it's just i thought i we we both thought like i had like random covid like i was just it was struck i had to like leave at four in the morning one uh one day just to, and my girlfriend had to drive me around just because like i couldn't breathe and awful so that's how i am but i'm, I'm good right now at the moment i'm good right now so it's good <laughs> it's weird times man have you have you been tested for antibodies? I thought not yet. I, I'm gonna go do it, I think, because I think that I may have had it in February. You know, I wanna the get initial things that they were saying is like, you know, if you think you had it in January or February, probably you didn't. But now they're saying You may have oh, well uh, Well I was I was paranoid and this ties into everything with going to concerts and stuff and you know what can we do in Juju concerts is wearing a mask enough is social distancing. Like why do I want to go to it? Yes, being in a doctor's office, they say it's all supposed to be safe, but I don't feel comfortable going to a doctor's office right now. I had to go. Like you can go to a drive through test. Yes, that's part that's that you is have to drive. That is very true. But the whole the whole concept of it. I didn't want to do anything medical. But until the the cat started killing me, I'm like, I have to go to a doctor. So that's when I put on my uh well actually I have a Guns N' Roses face mask right here. Of course you do. Where'd you get that? Amazon. <laughs> I also have I have a cat. Is that official merchandise? Did they actually make those? No, no. I wouldn't they get so. They have enough of my money. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, they made. Uh, I don't know if you guys probably think it's funny. They made COVID forty five shirts in reference to our our uh, commander in chief. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you don't know about this, Mike? Oh, I haven't seen. No. Uh, well, there was. Love it. We don't need to go down this rabbit hole completely, but there was. It was a month or so ago when Trump went to a mask factory and he wasn't wearing a mask and live and let die is on the, the loudspeaker, the GNR version. Yeah. And so I, in retaliation, they decided to make uh, live and let die with COVID 45 referencing, you know, the number president he is. So that they, they made that for sale. So that's uh, them guys that, are smart. <laughs> I don't know. There are a lot of people making. Oh, well, Pantera did something. They did. Um, they came out with a with the lyrics to "Walk," like you know, "Keep Six Back Away From Me." I, I, I'm I'm poorly paraphrasing, but some bands are kind of. Uh, you gotta prompt. do what you gotta do. I mean, yeah. As long as you know what, if they if they go to a charity, I, I'm I'm usually cool with that. But and I, I think the GNR one did. They made another T-shirt that goes to a lot of like the staff, you know. Um, like the, the, the music, yeah, just the touring staff, the people who can't work. So that's mm -hmm. that I definitely uh, support. So, I mean, th there's so much to look forward to from both of you that's coming out. I guess the question is like, well, I guess, Mike, we know how it's all going to be released, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the question is just like how and when it'll be. Well, uh, I mean, uh, I'm turning in the artwork for the seven inch here uh, today or tomorrow. Just I've looked at my phone a couple times and wonder if it's here. Um, okay. So that, that will just get released. I mean, th those. Uh, the hockey talker singles. I think you'll be able to buy on, you know, the, the, their website and locally and stuff. They only make 500 of them. Look, that's gonna be awesome. And then uh, now that we finished the the thing with the other label, we'll make a uh, announcement about that soon. That'll well, the next couple months. It'll be released, you know, on all the platforms and just all this stuff. We're just gonna work out. How, I don't. I probably am not gonna be doing any live streaming. I think we talked a little bit about that before. I'm. It's not really my thing, but maybe we might have to figure out a way to do some kind of release of some songs in a way that's different. I've got some ideas to how okay. to do that. Maybe not your typical music video stuff. Jeff, I don't know. We're, we're just, I don't know. You want to brainstorm with me? Uh, yeah. I'm an idea. He's an idea. <laughs> Make a shirt, dude. Make a shirt. I'm an yeah, idea man. I'm an idea man. There. I'm an idea man. <laughs> and maybe me and michael pop up doing something together or something like that soon on one of his things we'll oh, awesome. i didn't I, even have to pitch it to him <laughs> oh and, and mike before i forget something I, i've wanted to talk to you for a while how was because you were on the the tenderness record right you were on All right. can you talk about the recording like what you did on that album on duff's album yeah so you know duff i heard 
I think every one of those songs before they were tracked, as he was demoing them just from talking, you know, every week or a few times a week, just it's always a little different. And um, he was very excited about all the, and there's a lot of cool stuff that didn't make the record too, you know. Um, mm -hmm. He sent some stuff to me at one point. And then uh, I think what happened is I, was in LA for, and I stayed at his place for a couple of days and one or two of those songs he, he wrote while I was there. And so I, I played and sang on the demo. And uh, when um, a shooter heard the demo, he had a little bit of the demoitis, which is something that people get where there's an, ex there's a, there's an energy and an excitement to the initial idea when you throw it down haphazardly before you overthink it, you know? And what Shooter heard my weird harmonies and he was like, no, 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 no. We got to get this guy, whoever this guy is, we got to get him to sing on it. He didn't want my guitar solo, but he did. <laughs> he did say, uh, yeah, we want these vocals. Cause they're like, if we get studio people in here, it's not going to, it's going to be way different. And this is what we want. So I did it because they had the demoitis, luckily. So okay. chopped it up uh, to another, another little bit uh, in my, whatever, my discography. That's always been one of your, when it comes to um, vocals and Mike singing, you've always been really, really good at harmonies that I would never, or most people wouldn't think. You're just really good at that. You always have yeah. that on. The loaded records, you always, yeah, there's always. Or maybe I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. And it's like, whoa, interesting. But they're, bu but they're buying it. It's working. That's, that's art. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it, I mean, I can think of just some of the stuff we sometimes, I think on you know, early, load, like like Flatline, and some of the other stuff, there was some stuff that we'd do that three or four part harmony stuff that you oh. always had the perfect, just like that sideways harmony that would come in. I'm like, I don't I can't, like, I can never sing it, but you're always, it's somehow that's how you think. When I, when I only think about that stuff and I don't listen to it, I always, I, my impression of it or whatever, the way I feel about it is like that it's really scrappy and not actually as good as it is. I, on the rare occasion that I go and listen to those recordings, I'm like, or, or if I see something of us performing live, I, I see it and I think, oh, we could sing pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> like an executioner. Yeah, pretty good job. That, that harmony and executioner song, that, uh, that, that, and that, is it pre-core or the core, whatever that is. That harmony you do there is so weird and so awesome. The no yo history, that, that thing. But yeah, there's always the thing, you know, like a lot of this, like, I think that I'm doing something that is, you know, a la fill in the blank and it and then but it just goes through the weird filter that's my brain and so that was me <laughs> trying to like i was just trying to do alice in chains but right it's like me doing a weird version of something that's already weird <laughs> <laughs> that there, that's uh, that's Mike Squires right there. That's that's all you need. Yeah, <laughs> me doing go. a thing that's and, already weird and rap. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> my business card will actually have a little, a little have one of those little. Uh, it'll it's in the future. The technology's not there yet, but this is what's going to happen. It'll it'll you can put it up to your ear and you can hear my business card. It'll say, just a weird version of some already weird shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, since you're an idea man. Uh, hopefully you would like this idea. I think you guys should get together at least for a reunion with Loaded while web on the web because what is Duff doing right now? And you know he is so busy normally. He's probably going out of his mind. He's no? really busy, I think. All right. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. But <laughs> I mean, you know, you never know what what could happen or what will happen. I mean, I think I would love that. My gut is that it would be a distraction from things that are happening uh, at a that are vibrating at a higher frequency, you know. And so, but eventually, I think it'll it'll happen. 
Good. Well, I mean, the main reason I, I bring it up because I posted earlier on my social media my, and I posted the video, uh, you guys playing uh, where the Seahawks play. Uh, oh, yeah. We win. And I guess I asked, you know, if you guys seen Duff, uh, Duff's Loaded play live. So this was a cool comment. This is from Jason. Yes, three times and hung out after the show every, uh, every time, uh, which wasn't a meet and greet. Super cool guys, including Duff. And I still have, uh, still have Mike. Uh, I'm still friends with Mike on Facebook. I think it's broken English. Uh, also in the next room, the, in the venue, there was a rock disco on one of the nights. And the dudes from Loaded <laughs> and Ugly Kid Joe all went in it uh, into chill with a few beers. I remember cramping into cramping Cordell Crockett's vibe. I don't know what that means. I still remember cramping Cordell Rockets five. <laughs> Cordell is the bass player from Ugly yeah. Kid Joe. He's not like oh, other people. Okay. <laughs> On the dance floor when he was doing his best dance with a really hot girl, LOL. Then Jeff came and asked if I had seen their drummer and they had to leave. So that's, that's pretty much a story. Where's Burke? <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole other episode, I think. Uh, yeah. There's another Let's one. Let's check out Burke's thing really quick. Burke's got yeah. a new uh, interview thing that he's doing. So cool. And uh, I've only watched half or just like the beginning of an episode, but it's great. And it's him interviewing drummers. Mm -hmm. So there you go. That's, That's great. great. Uh, just a couple more just to show you guys uh, a lot of this is from Rebel. Uh, yes, 2009 in Finland. Traveled two hours from the show because my the gig in my hometown was restricted to uh, for minors. Uh, the show was outdoor in a festival and it was freezing. Oh, Absolutely. God. That right. was really cold. Really yeah. cold. Yeah. After the show sang with us. Me and Michael Monroe did, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Wow, that's great. Uh, of course. And we had, to, we had, and we got there. It was so far from our hotel. We got like typical thing. We got vanned into the, the the venue site in this trailer that's behind the stage. It has no heat. I mean, it literally was fifteen degrees. Like, and and Michael Monroe's military the, encampment. And and Michael, Monroe, there's nowhere to go because it's so cold outside. And we had this trailer. God bless Michael Monroe. He's amazing. But that guy can talk. <laughs> he talks a lot. He's been on the show. Yeah. I know <laughs> more than more than Mike. Are you able to ask a question? Yeah, and so he was just like, and it was amazing his stories, but it was like Michael Monroe on ten for like ten hours. It was amazing <laughs> trailer. Oh. Yeah, it was. It was anyway. That was a. I remember that day. That's great. Right. And Re Rebel says that he met you, Jeff, at a meet and greet, and said you were super sweet. Oh, uh, right. and now we. Mario said he saw you guys supporting Motorhead in Berlin. So, I mean, it's like everywhere. Oh, that show was cool. That was in that old abandoned uh, like I, munitions, I, munitions uh, hangar or something. Huge, like, warehouse thing, industrial warehouse. Yeah, that was a cool show. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's what – the, the stories you guys have – I got to play that show. Yeah. Really? Wow. That's, just, that's just for us, one second. That doesn't that matter. Awesome. That doesn't matter. That yeah. one second, that's all that matters. Yeah. You guys are you guys are too cool, and I, I love that you're still being creative while you know the world is trying to like is giving us restrictions, and you guys are pushing those restrictions away as much as possible. And <laughs> yeah. I, I those can't wait for people who are creative. Like, and this goes for artists and fucking poets and anything. If you're creative and you can't go to work or can't go outside, like that is a that's like a that's a funnel. You know, that's not a restriction on your creativity. That is a, I agree. a spark. So it, it just forces the issue for a lot of folks. Mm -hmm. So in a weird, weird way, I mean, uh, you try to take silver linings and, and then the, the bright side of things. Uh, I think the projects that you both are working on now are going to be amplified because of what's going on. And I can't wait for all the eyes and ears to be on both of your stuff. Which sounds Maybe weird well. out of context, what I just said. I don't want my eyes and ears on your stuff, but you know what I mean. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Uh, do. Why not? That's okay. You know, this yeah, yeah. is uh, we're all friends. Don't right? sure. shame me. Uh, last question: What do you guys want your the Seattle hockey team to be named? Oh God. See this, I because we've never had a I guess we have had a hockey team. I'm not really a hockey guy, and I and I'm hoping to change that. Um, and I, because I love going to sporting events. I don't. What, what did they? What have they come up with so far? Um, we bring. I should bring up that list. Oh, actually. Okay. I have uh, no. I want to. Know, I'm an idea man. I have some ideas for this. Okay, here we go. Because uh, by and large, the population of Seattle, at least from our generation, you know, for the most part, not exclusively, but 
don't know shit about hockey, including yeah, myself. Yeah. So yeah. here's here's some ideas. <clears throat> and I have the list, by the way, when you're when you're ready. Okay. Doesn't matter. <laughs> they they uh, they don't. I don't know if they've hired an idea man to name the team. Uh, the Seattle, what just happens? <laughs> the Seattle, what does that mean? <laughs> the Seattle high sticks, because that's the only thing that anyone knows. <laughs> uh, what else? Come on, Jeff. I, I, I don't, I'm not an idea guy for, I can't even hardly name a song or a band. I, I'm supposed to name a hockey team. Well, pick these thirteen because I, I've, I've wanted, uh, I've, I've always, even though I'm a New York guy, I've always loved the Sonics and oh, I don't know something about Seattle. I love the Mariners and Ken Griffey Jr. So I, I'm, I'm a little in most emotionally okay. interested okay. in the name. So here are the the, the thirteen Seattle names. Flashers. The what? The Seattle yeah, yeah. is known to have serial killers. Serial killers. Yeah. And the hockey mask, like uh, Jason from Friday the Thirteenth. Sure. The Seattle Slashers. Boom. Just I'll, throw the list I'll, away. I'll, I'll Send take me it. a check. I'll take, it. I'll take Mike's. Right now, it's either the Seattle Totems, the Emeralds, okay. the Rainers, the Rainier? Sockeyes. Uh, Sock Rainiers. Off. Yeah, Sockeyes, okay. Renegades. Oh, Sockeyes is kind of funny. Sockeye, the salmon thing. <laughs> uh, so uh, I, the, I like the Slashers more. The Sea yeah. Lions. How about the, the Sea Lions? The sea lions. Not really. Oh, no. The Fuck seals. How about the seals? Fuck that, Fuck seals. that name too. Yeah, the yeah. evergreens. No, none of those names sound tough. Uh, the, we have the whales, the cougars, the eagles, and the firebirds. So the firebirds we'll is kind of cool sounding because it sounds cool. tough. Uh, none of those names are good. Mike, we gotta. You're an idea man. We gotta yep. get you to. Uh, we gotta none get of you those names name. are good. They're, none of them are intimidating. <laughs> None of them are tough sounding. We're already going to be the new kids on the block. What do you want to come in? You might as well call it the the Seattle Capris. And the the only other name that possible is the Kraken that's going out. The Seattle Kraken. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I like having one of those names that rhymes with a curse word. <laughs> no, and then you get made fun of on the playground. Not cool. Like Kraken is a cool monster. <laughs> um, terrible name. Okay. You heard it here first. The Seattle <laughs> Slashers. Okay, good. Where it's at. All right, Seattle Slashers. And the of Mike course, uh, double album. all the Guns N' Roses people will like. All the people that will, are going to like that as well. Oh right, sure. Obviously, that's Maybe the obvious. Slash obvious. to play the, the opening. Are they all going to wear the hats? You know? then Duff, but then Duff would be jealous because he's all Seattle. It's got to oh. be the Seattle McCakins or something. The Seattle uh, Duffers. Oh, God. We're opening up a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the logo could be uh, the Jason, the, the uh, what do you call it? The goalie mask uh -huh. with the top hat. And then the, um, oh, no, instead of a cross, <laughs> it'll be the crossed hockey sticks. Stick, right. Mm -hmm. And then just four hockey masks, five hockey masks. <laughs> All right, let's get Gary Bevin on the phone. Let's yep. go. I'm telling you. I do. I'm say, hey, if anyone's listening right now and you're in a position <laughs> um, uh, where you, uh, you're at an impasse with some ideas, hit me up. I am an idea man, and I'm, I'm here <laughs> to help. I want the world to be better. And yeah, um, yeah. And you can contact. I take. I'm his manager, so I take ten percent. Just contact me. We'll be good. Ten percent of nothing, Jeff, is still nothing. You we've, know, we've, we've, we've learned. we forever. Yes, we've learned this for many years. <laughs> oh God, you guys are you guys are awesome. This was so. I mean, this lived up to the hype for me. I know it's been a, a bit. Yeah, you know, we've been trying to coordinate this, but Mike, so much to look forward uh, with you. Obviously, with Couch Riffs, you're your unnamed uh, album podcast that's going to come out with the, the punk rock feel uh, that we have your, your submission to the Seattle hockey commission that's coming out as well. And then uh, Jeff, of course, you know, Gemini affair and, and then your creative, whatever video you're going to, you're, you're going to come up for it. I think you got to make your, your kid a, a star of your music video or something. He, he, he's, yeah, that's I, how they go viral. That's how you, I can't, I can't believe he hasn't come out. Him and Zipper haven't come out here yet. I, I know my Stacy's back there corralling them for the last two hours. Like, oh, 
like I'm going to have to do something very nice <laughs> the rest of the day. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Anyway, well, thank you so much. Buddy. Always a go. Yeah, Thanks, well, buddy. yeah, thank you guys. So that, that does it you know, for this episode of Appetite for Distortion. When will you see the next one? Well, the words of Axel Rose concerning Chinese democracy. I don't know if soon is the, is the, uh, the word, but you'll see it. All right, so... <laughs>